Okay, so you want to know about generative AI. And I bet you want like the real deal, not just the hype, right? Where yeah. the sources you sent over? Right. Especially that McKinsey report. What is generative AI? That's a fantastic starting point. It's from April 2024. And it's dense. Yeah. I'll give you that. But that's what we're here for. Yeah, McKinsey's a global consulting powerhouse known for these deep dives, so their perspective is super valuable. Exactly. Think of us as like your cheat sheet. We're going to break it all down, pull out the most important bits, and help you see the big picture. And get this. McKinsey predicts generative AI could add trillions hmm. to the global economy annually. Hmm. Trillions with a T. Wow. Yeah, so it's kind of big deal. Yeah. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's lay some groundwork. What exactly are we talking about when we say generative AI? That's a great question because you hear AI and machine learning all the time, and sometimes they're used interchangeably, yeah. but they're not quite the same thing at okay. its core. Artificial mm -hmm. intelligence is all about creating machines that can mimic human intelligence. So like teaching a computer to think? Yeah, problem solving, yeah. learning, even creativity. Got it. And then machine learning is a type of AI. It's a way to achieve that goal. Instead of giving a machine explicit instructions for every single scenario, you let it learn from data, from patterns and examples. So it's more about learning from experience yeah. than being programmed with all the answers. Exactly. Oh, I like and it. you're already interacting with machine learning every single day. Really? Yeah, you don't even realize it. Think about personalized recommendations on your streaming services. Oh, yeah. Spam filters. Makes sense. Chat bots on websites, yeah. all powered by machine learning algorithms. That's a good point. It makes it seem a lot less like science fiction-y when yeah. you realize it's already here. For sure. Now, to understand generative AI, we need to look at how machine learning has evolved. Early models were mainly focused on recognizing patterns. Like, you show a computer a ton of cat pictures, mm -hmm. and it learns to identify a cat in any image, right. which was huge at the time. Yeah. But generative AI takes it a step further. It's a giant leap, actually. This is where it gets really interesting. It's not just about recognizing the cat anymore. It's about a machine being able to create a picture of a cat or write a poem about a cat even compose a song about one all from the data it's been trained on wow you know i do remember reading about mm -hmm. some early attempts at ai generated text yeah that were kind of hilarious like that new york times writer yeah who got those disastrous thanksgiving recipes i can't forget the green bean casserole with ah. gummy worms oh yeah that was a classic it really shows you how far we've come it does speaking of which ChatGPT, what does that even stand for? So it stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Catchy? Yeah, bit of a mouthful. The key part is generative, meaning it creates new content. Okay, I get it. So how does something like ChatGPT actually work? How does it learn to write so well? So imagine feeding it massive amounts of text data. The McKinsey Report uses this analogy of a quarter of the entire Library of Congress. It's mind-boggling. From all that text, the model learns to predict patterns relationships between words. It basically teaches itself the rules of language. It's not just reading though, right? Yeah. It's breaking language down into its core components yeah. and then figuring out how to put it back together yeah. in new creative ways. Exactly. That's wild. And that's how it can write in different styles. Shakespearean sonnets, rap lyrics, all depending on what you ask it to do. That's incredible. And it's not just ChatGPT, right? There are other players in this game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You've got OpenAI's GPT-3. That's another powerful language model, Google's BERT. It's really good at understanding the nuances of language. And even Meta's got Make a Video, right? which does what it says. It generates videos. Seems like everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. But building these things, mm -hmm. these models, it can't be easy. I imagine it takes a ton of resources. Oh, you're absolutely right. It's not some hobby project in someone's basement. We're talking top-tier talent, massive computing power. And of course, tons of money. Millions and millions of dollars, according to the report. It's a high stakes game with companies like OpenAI, DeepMind, which is owned by Google's parent company, Alphabet, and Meta. They're really leading the charge. So it's like a whole new arms race. Yeah. But instead of weapons, mm. it's who has the most powerful AI. Yeah. Okay, so we've got these incredibly complex models huh. that are super resource intensive to build. But what can they actually deal? What are we getting for all this effort? Well, that's where things get really mind-blowing, and that's what we'll dive into next. I mean, the potential here is really vast. Like, yeah. the McKinsey Report highlights how generative AI is already making waves in things like content creation, 
marketing, even coding and medical imaging. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Imagine a world where personalized marketing campaigns are just generated in seconds. That would be amazing. Or complex code written with minimal human input. Doctors using AI to analyze medical scans with incredible precision. It's almost like yeah. having an army of super efficient assistants yeah. at your fingertips, working tirelessly to make our lives easier exactly. and more productive. And let's not forget those economic implications we mentioned, McKinsey predicts a multi-trillion dollar impact. Yeah, that's not something to ignore. It really gives you a sense of just how transformative this technology could be. Okay, so we've talked about the potential benefits. Mm. And it all sounds incredibly exciting. But I know there are concerns too. Like, what about the possibility of misuse? Right. If these models can generate realistic text images and videos, couldn't they be used to create fake news Ugh. or deep fakes, yeah. other harmful content. You're right to raise those concerns because it's like any powerful tool. Yeah. You have to think about the potential for misuse. Yeah, for sure. I mean, imagine a world where deep fakes are so realistic that they could influence elections. It's a scary thought. Or AI-generated content is used to spread misinformation on yeah. a huge scale. Yeah, that's a chilling thought. It's almost like we're facing a double-edged sword here. Incredible potential for good. Yeah but also the risk of things going very wrong. Mm. So how do we navigate this? Mm. How do we harness the power of this tech while also safeguarding against the downsides? That's the million dollar question <laughs> and there's no easy answer, but the McKinsey report offers some valuable guidance. They emphasize a multifaceted approach, okay. focusing on responsible development, careful data selection, right. using smaller, more specialized models when appropriate. Yeah, I wouldn't wait All the time having human oversight. We can't yeah. just let these models run wild. Right. We need humans in the loop. Right. Making sure they're being used ethically and responsibly. So it's all about striking a balance. Mm. Embracing the potential, but also being aware of the risks. Yeah. And putting safeguards in place. Exactly. And it's an ongoing process. The regulatory landscape around AI is constantly evolving, so we need to stay informed, mm -hmm. stay adaptable, and be a part of the conversation. Yeah, it's not just a tech issue. It's a societal issue. Absolutely. One of the key recommendations in the report is the importance of careful data selection. Remember, these models learn from the data they're fed. Right. So if that data is biased or incomplete, the model will reflect those biases in its output. It's like garbage in, garbage out. Exactly. You can have the most sophisticated algorithm, but if it's trained on bad data, mm. you're going to get bad results. So where does this data even come from? It can come from all sorts of places. For language models like ChatGPT, it's often massive data sets of text and code scraped from the internet books, articles, you name it, Okay. for image generation models. It could be millions of images in their captions. So it's like they're absorbing all this information, yeah. all this human knowledge and creativity, and then using it to generate something new. But if the data itself is flawed, that's where things can get a little dicey. Exactly. That's why experts talk about data hygiene. Making sure the data used to train these models is as clean and unbiased and representative as possible. That makes sense. It involves things like identifying and mitigating biases, ensuring data privacy, yeah. and being transparent about the data sources used. It sounds like a whole science. It is. Behind building and training these models responsibly. And it's not just technical expertise, it also requires a deep understanding of ethics and social impact. Absolutely, it's a fascinating and rapidly evolving field. Wow. And the stakes are high. The decisions we make now about how to develop and deploy generative AI will have a huge impact on our future. Okay, so we've talked about the potential of generative AI, the risks, mm -hmm. the importance of responsible development and data selection. Mm. It's a lot to take in. Where do we even begin to wrap our heads around all this? Well, I think it's important to remember that this technology is still in its early stages. That's true. We're just starting to understand its capabilities and limitations. And that's what makes it so exciting. It's like we're standing at the edge of a new frontier, uh, full of possibilities and challenges. Exactly. But that also means we have a chance to shape the future of this technology. Mm -hmm. Precisely. And that's where you, the listener, come in. The more informed you are about generative AI, the better equipped you'll be to navigate this new landscape, to make informed decisions, and to contribute to the conversation yeah. about how this technology is developed and used. Okay, so this is where we bring it back to you, the listener. Why should you care about generative AI? How could it impact your life, your work, your world? Well, that's what we'll explore next. So stick with us. Okay, so we've talked about what generative AI is, how it works, the potential benefits, right. the risks, but now let's bring it all home. 
Why should you care about all of this? Well, you know, there's this one line in the McKinsey report that really stuck with me. It says that pretty soon, anything in tech that's not connected to AI could become obsolete. Wow. That's a pretty bold statement. It is. And it really makes you think about how this tech could impact your field. Yeah. Even if you don't work directly in tech. Definitely. Yeah. Like, let's say you're a writer. Okay. Could something like ChatGPT yeah. help you come up with ideas or write different types of content faster? Absolutely. It could even help you translate your work into other languages. So it's not about AI replacing writers. It's more about giving them new tools yeah. to be more creative and productive. Exactly. It's about collaboration, not replacement. I like that. And it's not just writers. Imagine architects using AI to design more sustainable buildings. Oh, that's a good one. Or musicians using it to compose new melodies. It's amazing to think how this technology could blur the lines mm -hmm. between all these creative fields. Yeah, like a musician using AI for visual art. Exactly. A writer using it to make music. The possibilities are kind of mind-blowing. They really are. And the applications go way beyond the arts, too. Think about healthcare. Doctors using AI to look at medical images. Right. Lawyers using it for legal research. Educators personalizing learning for their students. It seems like generative AI could really touch almost every part of our lives. Yeah. How we work. How we learn even how we create and experience art. And that brings us back to why it's so important to stay informed. This tech is evolving so quickly, and we all have a role to play in making sure it's developed and used responsibly. So what can our listeners do to stay ahead of the curve and make sure they're not left behind in this AI-powered future? Well, first of all, don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah, good advice. There are a ton of AI tools out there. Many of them are free. That's awesome. Play around with them. See what they can do. You might be surprised. Like anything new, right? Or and the best way to learn is to just dive in. Exactly. And don't just focus on the technical stuff. Think about the ethics, the potential yeah. biases, the impact on society. We need to be critical thinkers, yeah. not just passive consumers. I completely agree. Ask questions, challenge assumptions, and be part of the conversation about how we want to shape the future of AI. Well, there you have it, folks, our deep dive into the world of generative AI. It's complex. It's changing fast. Mm. But hopefully you've got a better understanding now of what it is, right. what it can do, and why it matters. And remember, this is just the beginning. We've only scratched the surface. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those sources coming. We'll be here to help you navigate it all. Thanks for joining us.